Come on, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Wap, wap. Boom. So he's like, I hit adjacent. Like, <laughs> watch, watch him do it again. I hit adjacent. There we go. Just in case you didn't know, if he hits in a cone, this man says, I hit adjacent. There you go. A little, a little pause. I do not get a break. Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? We got a brand new updizzle. And the update just pretty much mean a new character is coming into the game. We have a defense type, a tank. What is it with skinny tanks? I have my tanks to look big. Uh, Cold Calculation Adrian, the other guy that's on the intro screen. So we're gonna be taking a look at him. Also, before I go into him, I do not think that I did a guide on this dungeon. I'll try to get you guys a guide for this dungeon as well since it's gonna be coming up uh, tomorrow. Well, actually today when the reset happens. So with this guy, a male Dryan of equal standing of Haspel. So he's supposed to be just as strong as him storyline wise. But who cares? Let's look at <laughs> let's look at these lovely skills. Leader skill is gonna be Spirit Sword. Increases dark and wind allies attack by 50%. That is one of the hugest ones, especially for a dual element leader skill. S1 dancing sword. Looks like it's going to be a cone attack with a chance to taunt and increasing chances to cast Sword of Protection. So it has a chance to cast Sword of Protection and if they don't have it, if they do have it, it will increase the duration, so it'll extend it. Sounds like multi Counter-Strike to me. I say that for like every character, so you know, <laughs> whatever. And of course the chances go up as the level goes up. Then then we have Pact of Protection. 100% chance to cast Sword of Protection on the caster for one turn. So this is just a chance for it to happen. S2 seems to be guaranteed and inflicts damage to all enemies. Very similar to Amon so far. It's like a S1, but Amon doesn't have an S1 cone. He has an S1 single target. So his taunt has a higher chance of landing. This one is like Ian and like Elektra, Murdoch, something like that. S2, but I say Amon because it's the S2 that hits all characters. That's the only reason why I said that. I apologize. So we see here that it actually has a 100% chance to taunt only at level three, which is actually pretty good. But at level six, it becomes a little bit more crazier with, oh, it just 100% uh, chance to taunt for two turns, which is kind of nuts. Also, the sword protection goes up to two turns as well once you reach level six. So, so far, I'm looking like I'd probably level the S2 first, but we gotta, we gotta see the full package. Right, you know, don't don't spoil, don't look down there, you cheater. All right, so spirit slice inflicts penetration damage equal to one enemy, which doesn't. He's a tank. Who cares about this? Hundred percent chance to reveal weakness. That's good for two turns only at level six. That kind of sucks. And we see chances to put revive unavailable on a target. Oh, a, an adjacent or revive unavailable. That's okay. I mean, especially like Ariandel is now in the mix, and I do think she's a really strong character. Her speed being slow and then she has an HP balance, which means if you don't kill her or damage her severely, she's gonna HP balance whoever you have been focusing, so. And she needs to be anti-revive, so it's nice that they're coming out with another anti-revive character, especially from a tank, so that means you don't have to, I wouldn't say waste a turn, I don't wanna say waste a turn on one of your DPSs, but it's nice that your tank can do it, and then your DPS can follow up after your tank, so that's pretty cool. And it's a cone, una unable to revive it, a pretty high chance if you level it up. Remember, this is a banner character from my understanding, so you probably won't get these things leveled up, but you know, it is nice. So first we have, it comes to me, oh boy, oh boy, let's let's stop. Gotta stick one step at a time. 100% chance to apply Spirit Shackles. This is the Sword of Protection passive. 100% chance to apply Spirit Shackles to three non-defense type uh, enemies for six turns at the start of the battle. That's very important to note, start of the battle because start of the wave is literally every wave that comes so every time you go into another stage this is start of the battle so this specifically is not that good in terms of car that's running by it's not that good in terms of like pve because there's usually multiple stages but it should be better for pvp so this might be a pvp specific hero i mean also revive unavailable is pvp <laughs> so yeah Decreases the caster's damage taken by 50% and has a 50% chance to ignore damage taken if cast has sword of protection. So to ignore half of the damage that you take is nuts. So maybe he's not just PvP. <laughs> but it's a half chance of it happening, right? Yeah, so he, wait, so I'm misreading it. So decreases the damage taken by 50%, right? So he takes half damage already 
and then there's a chance that he also will ignore the damage. I have to see that. That's interesting to see. I need to see if literally there will be times where he does not take damage. And what do they call it? All damage immunity. I'm assuming that's what it's going to be called. He'll probably still take stuns because it doesn't say he evades. He just doesn't take damage. So that means he can still be stunned, things of that nature. And I would like to know if he's stunned, can this still go on? Can he still take 50% no like 50% chance for no damage or sometimes when a character gets stunned that they can't avoid damage when they're stunned So that'd be interesting to see last but not least calculated strategy becomes immune to damage over time That's kind of cool 50% chance to apply spirit shackles for six turns when attacking so There goes the neighborhood But they don't really explain what spirit shackles is though. Oh, okay. Okay, so I, I, I get it. So 100% chance to apply Spirit Shackles to those characters, and this is pretty much what Spirit Shackles does. So I think that a character with Spirit Shackles, they do 50% less damage to him, and there's a 50% chance for it to ignore defense on him if the caster has Sword of Protection. And then every time he attacks, there's a 40% that 50% chance for Spirit Shackles to be applied when attacking. I guess it's random, it doesn't say to that target, it just says when he attacks. Again, since we already read how the S1 works, we're, we pretty much wanted to do multi-counter anyway. And then increases allies damage by 40% of the cast, so similar to Amon again. It's like his better, like not better counterpart, but so you S2, get the sword, you already should have the, no, you do not have a sword of protection in the beginning. So he's gonna need to actually get that up as quick as possible. So S2, AOE taunt, why not? 80, what is this? 80%, 70% chance on base level. So that's really good. 70% chance to taunt, get your sword of protection, S1, and this is an attack, right? So you can S2 into S1 if your multi-strike is high enough. So multi-striking is probably gonna be the better bet. He does have taunts though, so usually with a taunt, he might be what we were just talking about in Ariandel's guide. You guys should check that out. Please, I love you forever. Check that out. Make sure that you are definitely doing some type of mixture, counter attack, multi strike. So, this character, especially counter, I think counter would be technically important. You're taunting a lot of characters here. Uh, AoE taunts all over the board. And also, I think if the hero talents, we haven't done a, a, a tank guide in a long time. But funny enough, that I think in the tanks, they have a hero talent that their S3 will AoE taunt as well. That'd be really good for this character. So yeah, pretty good. I, I definitely like him. Let's look at the dancing sword. Oh, he's dual wielder. Come on, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Wap, wap, boom. So he's like, I hit adjacent. Like, <laughs> watch, watch him do it again. I hit adjacent. There we go. Just in case you didn't know, if he hits in a cone, this man says, I hit adjacent. There you go. A little pause. So here's the AoE. Looks like he smacks the win up at you. Come on. Yo, they have a long delay on these. Usually it's not like that long, but boom. That hits all enemies, which is pretty cool. Spirit Slice, which... Oh, no, this looks like the beginning. Ooh, ah, 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 ah. Freeze framing. It's like... It's like the game wants me. <laughs> Knights Chronicles, like, yo, you're making a lot of YouTube content for us. We just want to make sure that you can get the perfect thumbnail in the future. <laughs> oh, man, that's kind of funny. It does weird, though. Uh, in the beginning, there's, like, leaves blowing, but it looks like he's in space. I think that's a really weird design decision. <laughs> um, but the animation actually looks pretty cool. I can't wait to see it with an enemy on it. Oh, I, I kind of almost want to put him out before... Um... <laughs> Basker. I said I was gonna do Basker though, right? But this guy looks really cool. I definitely think that he's cool. I like his kit. His kit is really good. It's very useful. More specifically, if you could spirit shackle bosses, then he's gonna go up a lot. He can actually probably solo tank some characters. And this is the same reason why, like if you go into Ariandel's dungeon, that they're abnormal status immune because being able to taunt has mitigated a lot of damage in other dungeons. So if this guy can taunt characters, shackle them, keep a boss shackle because at this point you don't have to worry about if it's gonna hit a random target, it's gonna hit that specific target and have take 50% less damage and 50% chance to ignore. I wonder if this would even work in, let's say Lily's dungeon, I think it is, right? Where males take more damage. I would definitely love to see like if he could survive as a tank in that dungeon by just mitigating all the damage towards him, he will take half of it and then there's chances that he might not take any damage at all. He's probably gonna be the most fun to actually test, like to test a uh, affinity game. I haven't had a character to test in a long time, like that has a, a mechanic that's interesting enough to test. And just for a spoiler, I have, I didn't spend all of my crystals. <laughs>
I said I did buy, to be fair, I did buy some costumes. Hold on. I'm not a liar. Well, I'm not a complete liar. See, look, you guys voted on the Ramu costume. I got the Ramu costume. I just didn't get some of the other ones. <laughs> I was so indecisive. Oh man, I was so, I think I have to get like Cynthia or something like that if I remember with the voting, but I got this and we, we lucked out. We kind of lucked out. So now um, we can at least buy this and then we'll go. <laughs> I'm so picky with my crystals, but I did get the Ramu one and it was helpful in Ariandel. It didn't give me the clear, but it did help a little bit. So now we'll, we'll get some of the other ones eventually. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please love me and hold me gently. But remember one very important thing. Uh, well, two important things. We're gonna get a guide out on this guy as soon as possible. I might even do Basker maybe today and then do um, his like tomorrow-esque or something like that. If I get him, well, summon video of course, and then, you know, then we, we get him. So, you know the process. Summon video and then maybe the guide later on in the day. Whatever have you, whatever comes first. Or summon video end of today and then guide video the next day and then basket. I don't know, we're gonna be busy today. <laughs> Hope you guys tune in, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like button, love button. They never make the love button. But hopefully you guys enjoy. And remember the other very important thing is that every day at the Cashino is your lucky day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.